Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm going to begin reading at verse 3 in a moment. If you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Let's study God's Word together. And to help you do that, why don't you get a piece of paper and pencil, something to write with, and jot down some key truths as we find them here in our passage. I think you'll be encouraged today. Also, uh, having that piece of paper and pencil ready, you'll be able to jot down contact information My announcer at the end of the broadcast is going to come back and give you our mailing address, going to give you our phone number, going to give you our website address. Pick out one of those. Contact us. Give us your name and your mailing address. Please let me send you a sample packet of our gospel tracks. I'll talk about a particular track here in a moment, but I want to begin this way. It was way back in 1978, a long time ago, that I began pastoring my first local church. Now, two years prior to that, I was a youth pastor, but now I was doing the preaching myself. And friend, it took me all of about 10 minutes of being the pastor to discover how green and unprepared I was and how my preaching and pastoral skills were just downright lousy. But then, while doing some studying to get ready to preach, I stumbled over a phrase, a two-word phrase in the Bible. I discovered it in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, which says, but God. I looked up every place I could find in God's Word where those two words happened together. Now, it took me a while. Remember, back then, nobody had computers. Those instances where the phrase, but God showed up, got me so excited and so encouraged. Mark Smith was a weak preacher, a weak servant, but God was not. Mark Smith couldn't hardly put one word in front of another, but God could. Mark Smith was a poor leader of people, but God is a powerful leader of people. I preached a Sunday night message on all of those but God Bible verses, and I began to surrender my life and ministry to God and let him preach through me and lead through me and move hearts through me. Today, the text before us does not begin with the phrase, but God exactly, but it sure is awful close. The phrase we're going to see as we look at chapter 3 and verse 3 is this, but the Lord is and then I'm going to put a word blank. Do you know what goes in the blank? You know what the next word is? Oh, it's a great encouragement. Get your Bible and join me. Second Thessalonians, please, chapter 3. I mentioned those gospel tracks. Now, when I talk about a gospel tract, I'm not talking about a music track. I'm talking about a track that is a short written presentation that tells somebody how to know Christ as their Savior. A gospel track will lay out the fact that people are sinners and need a Savior, and that it'll lay out what Christ has done at Calvary that people through him might be saved. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously speaking, but then there's a subtitle, you may be sincerely wrong. There's a whole lot of people that are sincere about things. They're sincere about religion. They, they take their religious activity seriously, but they're religious, but they're not right with God. They think they have the right medicine to cure their soul disease of sin, but only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, friend, here's a great, very simple, but clear, clear gospel track. Seriously speaking, please get this from me. Now, listen, at the end of the broadcast, when my announcer gives our contact information, jot down the method of communicating with us that works best for you. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. I'll send you a complete sample packet, one each of all of our English gospel tracks, and it will be this one. Seriously speaking, you may be sincerely wrong. 
All right, take your Bible with me, please. Second Thessalonians chapter three, I begin reading at verse three. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. I'm gonna stop reading right there. The opening five verses here of Second Thessalonians 3 lay out some very practical advice to local church folk when they are facing disorder due to outsiders. Now, by outsiders, I mean people that are lost and not saved. In verses 1 and 2, we looked at on the Monday broadcast, the Apostle Paul there faced political and religious leaders who opposed the gospel. Oh, they were not anti-religion. They were just anti-gospel, the gospel of grace religion, where Christ is the only way to be saved. But now here in verses 3 to 5, the apostles are now going to speak to the saints who are part of the church there in Thessalonica because he knew that they also were facing their own set of problems from gospel opponents. After ending verse 2, where he says that not all men have saving faith, that is gospel faith, Paul jumps into a very encouraging truth. Oh, yes, there are those who resist and resent the work of the gospel. And if you and I let our focus stay on our enemies, we're really going to get discouraged. So the Holy Spirit prompts Paul to quickly add this statement, but... The Lord is faithful. When we're facing enemies, we've got a faithful God. There are three facts about our God that we can rest in and depend on when the enemy comes in like a flood. Let me just make this statement before I go any farther. If you or I are living a haphazard spiritual life, if you and I are having a sloppy spirituality, then you and I are letting the enemy come in like a flood. That requires repentance and a change of heart, change of life. But if you and I are walking in the light as he is in the light, if you and I are striving to serve God with all that we have, the enemy is still going to try uh, to stop our gospel work. But we can be assured of three facts. Ready? Fact number one, it is the person of God that he's faithful. The person of God that he is faithful. We can trust our God. This trust is not about trusting him as our Savior right here, but this is, we've already trusted Christ as our Savior from sin, but this trust is trusting him as our shepherd. He's going to help us and lead us and stand with us and stand up for us. He will help lead us through the disorder that's being created by those outside the gospel. Our God is faithful. Our God is trustworthy. He is going to be there for us. Fact number two, not only do we have the person of God who is faithful, we also have the power of God. Look at verse three. It says, the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. Oh, there's a great word. The word establish means that God is going to strengthen, and in particular, it's a strengthening that makes us stand in a fixed position, unmovable. God has the ability to strengthen us like our feet are set in concrete for the right reason. I'm sure you remember the story over in the Gospel of Luke and chapter 16 about the rich man and Lazarus. Both men died. You remember the story? But the rich man went to torment in hell, while Lazarus went into the peace, a place of peace called Abraham's bosom. The rich man, while in hell, wanted Lazarus to come and be allowed to come and just with a, just with a few drops of water to ease his torment. But Abraham said, no, 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 it can't happen. Abraham said, there is a gulf fixed. Notice the word, a gulf fixed between the two locations and no one can cross from one side to the other. The word fixed there in Luke 16 is the same word used here, translated established. Just as God set up a fixed and unmovable gulf between the two men, so the same God can strengthen and fix you and me into an unshakable stance in doing our gospel service. All right, fact number one is the the person of God. He is faithful. 
Fact number two, the power of God, the power of God to establish and strengthen us. Fact number three, the protection of God. Verse three says that God will not only establish you, but he will also keep you from evil or evil one. God will guard you, dear gospel worker. This word keep is used of shepherds keeping their flock at night as part of the Christmas story. It was used in Acts chapter 28 of a soldier keeping their prisoner from escaping. You get the picture? This is a a garrison, a, a keeping, a protecting. When you and I are doing gospel work, there is no promise of sweetness and roses, chocolate bars. There's going to be a pushback when the name of Jesus, the only Christ, the only Son of God, the only way of salvation, when the name of Jesus is lifted up by those who proclaim the gospel, when the name of Jesus is lifted up and proclaimed in a community by the gospel work of a local church, expect there to be pushback. Oh, friend, let me ask you, are you a friend and promoter of the gospel or are you one that opposes the gospel, the gospel of Christ? I'm not talking about religion now. I'm talking about the gospel. The gospel in a nutshell goes like this. A, all are sinners. All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. B, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You must put your faith in him. C, confess him as your savior. Dear friend, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Thou, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you promote the gospel or are you opposed to the gospel? But you perhaps you say, Pastor Mark, I, I appreciate the gospel. I like the gospel, but I just don't make a very big deal about it. Oh, is that true for you, friend? To you, then, I must say that the Bible has described your condition. You are a lukewarm person. That phrase actually occurs over in the book of the Revelation, chapter 3. You are a lukewarm person. Now, those who are lukewarm to the gospel, those who are lukewarm about the gospel and with the gospel, they are people who, according to the book of Revelation, cause a nauseating response from Christ. Jesus says, I would rather you be cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's, a, that's not a polite thing to say, but dear friend, there are a whole lot of people who want the salvation and the heaven part of knowing Christ. They don't want to own, though, Jesus Christ in a public way. Jesus told his own disciples in the Gospel of Mark that if we own him, before men, he'll own us before our Father in heaven. But if we don't own Christ before him, then he won't own us before his Father in heaven. Dear friend, those are serious words. Some not all, not all people uh, interpret them the same way, but they're pretty serious words, aren't they? Dear friend, what are you doing with the gospel? Have you believed on Christ as Savior? If you have, what are you doing with it now? If you haven't yet believed on Christ as Savior, today is the day you ought to with a broken, repentant heart, cry out to God for mercy. He loves you, friend. Christ died to pay for your sin debt, but you must place your faith in him. Do that today. He will abundantly pardon you. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.